Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect, the household of faith, the remnant coming back to the Most High in these latter days due to sacrifice made by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, all right, in which we have the Rachahakwadash, the Holy Spirit, sent from on high so that the men of the Lord, all right, can go out and teach this word, all right, and that the remnant be gathered all through the spirit, all right. So today I wanted to speak on Babylon the Great and how it would be a great city of oppression for the Israelites, all right, in the latter days. Not only that, but a world power, all right, that uh, is known as the hammer of the world that the Heavenly Father is going to destroy utterly all right via war and via the angels when they come all right now you have this argument which has been made before being made by uh, the left hand all right whether you're set up by you know the the powers that be or whether you're just deceived by a left hand spirit if you're teaching that babylon the great okay is uh merely the vatican which is about i believe five to eight miles uh, wide and long you're absolutely crazy all right the the heavenly father says that babylon the great would be utterly destroyed with fire all right we're gonna look down upon it as we are delivered out of it all right uh as it stands currently the vatican all right is not a major hub of oppression for the israelites the israelites are not physically there being oppressed in large number now of course we know that they are israelites over there we know that that is a hub of witchcraft um when you uh, read in the scriptures it deals with the false prophet it deals with the uh unclean you know frogs right uh the roman catholic church does have its role um in the uh whole scheme of things all right but it's not babylon the great babylon the great is the focal point of end time prophecy because it is where the israelites both northern and southern kingdom all right will be raised up primarily not that you know they're not scattered in any other captivity all right but um the bible focuses on babylon for a reason because babylon is america all right which when you look at the world everything is centered around america okay and um for years they've been able to escape who they really were but now the prophets have raised up and we're linking america we're linking babylon to the edomites all right and they're in trouble and it's becoming more and more clear as uh things unfold that we are telling the truth so you're gonna have um the naysayers you're gonna have the garbage you're gonna have all of these uh whack breakdowns come all right but uh we're here to just give you the 100 percent truth now when you read revelation the 18th chapter you read about babylon the great okay uh and its destruction all right which leads into the kingdom of heaven linking up with the biblical narrative that esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that followeth okay in this whole chapter john the revelator sees babylon the great being destroyed and he gives you the reasons why it would be destroyed and how the other nations all right would react all right it tells you that the kings of the earth all right are going to be well her showing you that the end of the world and the destruction of babylon is not synonymous with the whole earth being destroyed all right because you have a lot of people who like to push that narrative all right uh the kingdom of heaven being set up is synonymous with the transfer all right of the kingdom from the edomites to the israelites okay so when you read this chapter it gives you a, a great outline and this is not the only chapter that goes into this okay this was uh prophesied and saw by various prophets now i'm going to jump to jeremiah the 50th chapter that speaks of the same thing now to prove that the kingdom of heaven is directly after this great babylon uh destruction all right which you have these uh edomites and christians who you know they some reason you know they don't want to deal with this narrative all right they talk about heaven and you know the kingdom and all of these things but in order for that to happen first of all the kingdom of heaven is the throne of david being established on earth they don't want to deal with that
But in order for that kingdom to be set up, this Babylon has to fall. Because when you read this very next chapter, okay, now when you read it here, um, let's see here. I start at 18 and 20. It says, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, because they would be here in Babylon, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence, that great city, all right, <laughs> shall that great city be thrown down and be found no more at all. Okay. And when you go into these different scholars, they'll say uh, all sorts of things, man. And speaking of Rome now, in a, in a spiritual sense, th this is Rome. Because Babylon the Great is the revival of the ancient Roman Empire. All right. But that's only in its works. Okay. Physically, it's Babylon the Great here in America. All right. But as you can see, America takes on the customs of the Greco Roman Empire all the way. We're even seeing that in this thing being pushed. Nothing but Greco Roman gods and idols and names being thrown around. For those who have ears to ear and eyes to see all right and it says in the voice of the harpers and the musicians all of these parades and things and the trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee and no more craftsmen or whatever crafty be shall be found because this is a merchant city all right this is a place where money is made okay but we'll go into that at another time it says and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee okay and the light of the candle shall no more be at all found in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants, all right, were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived, all right? And when you go into sorceries, okay, really quick, when you go into that word sorceries, okay, it's so ultimately their witchcraft, but. What is that? What is that word? Okay. Give me one second here. We see it says pharmacia. All right. Pharmacia or pharmacy, right? The use of administering drugs, poisoning, magical arts, also often found in connection with adultery, metaphorically, the deceptions and the, uh, seductions of adultery. And there's many ways that this happens, but. One of the main hubs of uh, evil synonymous with America is that pharmaceutical industry. All right. Which is uh, at the very at this very moment being used to to do what you put the pieces together. All right. So it says and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, America, as we go into prophecy, you'll see is the hammer of the earth. And who did they take down primarily, man? Uh, uh, the, 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 the Israelites, the saints, okay? And all of the other nations as well, okay? But the, 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 the Vatican didn't do that, okay? America, Babylon the Great did that. The Vatican had their role in it. Don't get it twisted, all right? But uh, overall... We know that everything is fulfilled through this great whore, Babylon the Great. Now, this very next chapter, after this Babylon is destroyed, what's, what's, what's the next, very next thing that happens? Okay? Revelation 19 and 1, And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, Okay, which that can be found in Revelation, the 17th chapter. Got to finish the video Apostle Tahar just did on that. All right, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. Okay, her lust. And that's what America is used by the elites to do, to go all throughout the four corners of the earth and weaken strongholds, destroy cultures, destroy family values, destroy every damn thing. Okay, China just said what? Our men have been seduced by the West to the point where we, we need to take all of these uh, effeminate, you know, things out of our culture. And our men need to become more manly. Where did, it, where did that influence come from? All right. America. It has, you know, uh, turned the whole earth upside down, man. 
Okay? Everybody looks to this place. And now they're finding out that, that this place has, is, is, is absolute. You know, the nations are mad. Okay? It says, and have avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Because the blood of his servants were, you know, ultimately uh, shed here. All right? Uh, the so-called Native Americans. That's the tribe of Gad. All of the, the northern tribes. Okay? Uh, 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 Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were brought over here into hardcore captivity. Okay? That 350 years of where we didn't have no idea who we were and broken. That was here in America. Okay? It started with America, man. Okay? And have avenged the, uh, uh, the blood of his servants at our hand. Okay? And again, they said, hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. So... This great whore, Babylon, a great falling is synonymous with the kingdom of heaven that the Bible speaks of, which lines up with Esau being the end of the world. Now, when you go to the book of Jeremiah, OK, Jeremiah gives a vision. OK, in this uh, this this chapter, it deals with prophecy against Babylon. Now, when you read how this prophecy is uh, written, it has nothing to do with the ancient neo-babylonian empire that a lot of people try to attribute this track chapter to okay when you're dealing prophecy okay you had uh, of course the tower of babel at the time of nimrod all right that's babel all right over in the land of you know samaria the ur of the chaldees then you have the neo-babylonian empire but then when you go into um prophecy there's a babylon that is going to be utterly destroyed by fire okay the Neo-Babylonian Empire was taken down by the, the, the Persians and the Medes. Okay, it wasn't uh, utterly destroyed with fire. Okay, yeah, the Israelites were captive there, but the key thing, it was only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi who were captive in the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Okay, so as you read this uh, chapter, this is a letter that Jeremiah gave to Sariah as the uh, king... I believe it was Zedekiah at the time, went to pay tribute, okay, to Nebuchadnezzar. Jeremiah wrote this letter for Sariah to read to the captives that were at Babylon, okay? But when you read this, okay, it's really written for us, okay, uh, of the household of faith, because this is speaking of the destruction of the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great, as it speaks of in Isaiah the 47th chapter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, jump around and I'm going to start at uh, Jeremiah 50 and 22. Because basically Babylon the Great in prophecy is a hub of oppression in the last hub of oppression for the Israelites. Okay, when you get, uh, let's get Lamentations, the fourth chapter real quick. Okay, Lamentations, the fourth chapter. see in the very last verse it says rejoice and be glad all right or lamentations 4 and 21 rejoice and be glad O daughter of edom that dwelleth in the land of us the cup also shall pass through unto thee and thou shalt be drunken and make thyself naked the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished O daughter of Zion he will no more carry thee away into captivity he will visit thine iniquity O daughter of Edom he will discover thy sins so the Israelites punishment will be ended through the fall of Babylon as we just read in Revelation the 18th chapter the saints the prophets all right and now as you go into a more prophecy you see that it would be ended through esau which goes with the whole narrative that esau is the end of the world esau runs this modern day babylon and this is what they're trying to escape from and then you have these false prophets set up to further cause confusion okay because they're all of the left hand at the end of the day it's clear as day in prophecy psalms 137 and 7 remember O lord the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said race it race it even to the foundation thereof now when the uh, in the neo-babylonian empire remember they attacked the temple they sacked the temple and remember as you go into history the Edomites helped them okay this psalm is calling for the Lord to remember that okay 
which this is all a prophecy anyway, because it hadn't happened yet. OK. Uh, uh, and how are they going to pay? Or how is the, the Edomites going to finally get their payback for their, their works over all of these years? Even going back to Cain, even the serpent, it says, O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. So the daughter of Babylon is how the biblical Edomites are going to fall. All right. Keep that in mind. OK. And they're trying to run from who they really are. Now, you have a lot of people that say we're at the end. OK, uh, this is the end. Jesus is coming. A lot of these Christians. But then when you start to, you know, get into the end and who would be ruling at the end and what will be happening, then they want to call you a conspiracy theory. They want to say you're crazy. They want to say you're hateful. It's just biblical prophecy. OK, the, the, the centers around Jacob and Esau. OK. It's just that the Lord has raised up the prophets with the, the, the true insight of who's who and what's what. And we're the lowly. So they laugh at us. They mock us. But constantly the things that we're saying through the Holy Spirit are coming to pass, man. And the and the elect are, are, are coming to the true understanding. All right. Jeremiah 50 and 22. It says a sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. The Neo-Babylonian Empire didn't fall like that. It's a few skirmishes, a few wars, but the kingdom was translated to the Persians and the Medes. Daniel, the fifth chapter goes into that. So this is speaking of a new Babylon. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? And the hammer of the earth is this whore. Okay. When you look in, uh, uh, at its uh, even... It's been in existence about 290 something years, America. Of that, 90 plus percent of it has been filled with war where they're on the offense. OK, look at look, look at how much war is going on around the earth with America at the forefront of it. OK, this is the hammer of the earth, not the Vatican. <laughs> Another thing is Babylon the Great is known as a uh, city where many ports and merchants would come to make money. OK, America has the most ports. OK, in, where, where things can be imported by trading on sea, not the dang Vatican, bro. And that's in Revelation, the 18th chapter it says, how is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and how is Babylon? OK, become a desolation among the nations. All right. It says, I have laid a snare for thee and thou art also taken. And, and the snare is being laid right now. It's the, 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 the NATO and the EU countries are, are looking at it crazy sideways. OK, Russia, Gog, which is Gog and Mega, is various things happening in prophecy, which are going to lead to the fall of this horde. But they're not aware because why the pride of their heart have deceived them. OK, I've laid a snare for thee and thou are also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware thou art found and also caught for thou hast striven against the Lord through what? Witchcraft, pride, OK, destruction, putting drugs in our neighborhoods. This is the hub of the destruction of the Israelites, as well as various other parts of the earth, which ultimately they have their hand in. Okay, not the Vatican City. Okay, and this this whole uh, verse twenty four, the snare that's laid for 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 Babylon is synonymous with the snare, okay, or the um, wound that is laid for Esau, Obadiah, verse seven. All the men of thy confederacy, okay, his allies, his EU, okay, have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and have prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread, okay, uh, his debt, you know, uh, these nations who have taken on that petrodollar, okay, have laid a wound under thee and there is no understanding in him. So Esau doesn't have any idea. Babylon, America doesn't have any idea what it's being set up for. All right. 
there's a wound, a, a, a snare, a trap being laid for this place, all for the sake of prophecy. OK, so it's all linked if you have the uh, the the ears to hear and the eyes to see. And this is only for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. This ain't for everybody. OK. Because you have people who may say, well, Babylon is America. But then when you try to link the Edomites to it, nah, that's being racist. You know, or they'll say uh, we're at the end. But then they don't want to, uh, you know, they don't want to deal with the fact that the end is synonymous with Esau. So pretty much everybody's being sna Everybody's in a snare. Everybody's uh, being set up in prophecy is going to be the determining factor of who's who and what's what and it's nowhere to hide it's nowhere to go even with the mob okay the elites are trying to figure out a way to detach it from what's written in biblical prophecy but they can't they can't they're doing exactly what the scripture said they would do okay so it says in verse 25, the Lord have opened his armory and have brought forth his weapons of his in the weapons of his indignation because World War Three is getting ready to uh, break out. That's why all of these different nations ultimately have nuclear capability in these times, whether it through uh, be through, you know, uh, creating their own systems or aligning with someone. All right. Who who is um, giving them to them? Or selling them to them okay all nations are preparing for what is known as armageddon in the holy scriptures which is going to end and you know these nations it's the broad for it all but these nations are not only going to destroy themselves but they're going to the the, the the beast is going to hate the whore and shoot missiles and fire on her and at that same time the you know who the world ignorantly calls jesus christ is going to come back and deliver the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. It says for this is the work of the most high. In the land of the Chaldeans. Alright. And people get thrown off by that term Chaldeans. But when you get the book of Isaiah the 47th chapter. So they'll say this is speaking of the ancient Babylon. No it ain't. <laughs> There's also a daughter of the Chaldeans. Which is Babylon the Great. Okay, Isaiah 47 and 1, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne. O daughter of the Chaldeans, thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. And when you go down and read all of this, it's proof that it's Esau. All right. But when you read it here in verse 6, it says, I was wroth with my people. And what happens when the Lord uh, judges the nation of Israel? He gives them into the hand of an ungodly nation. Okay. Well, the final heathen that will rule over us, okay, is uh, that 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 uh, fourth beast and that little horn that will issue forth from it. Okay. Babylon the Great is that little horn that issued forth from the fourth, which is the revival of the ancient Greco-Roman beast system here right now. America, Babylon the Great the NATO and the EU. And what did he say? I was wroth with my people I have my I polluted mine inheritance. I have given them into thine hand. You see that? Not the, the where's a, a, a great large number of Israelites recorded to be in captivity right now and standing up and prophesying in the Vatican city. Not to say there aren't any Israelites over there, right? But the Lord specifically gave us into the hand of the Edomites via Babylon, okay, America, as well as the various different captivities where we've been scattered, okay? It's all captivity, okay? But you cannot deny America's uh, hardcore presence in the whole, whole fact, not the Vatican. Okay, so he has given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient, as thou uh, verily heavily laid thy yoke. Thou hast said, I shall sit as a lady forever, and thou didst not lay these things to thine heart, neither didst thou remember the latter end of it. Okay, and this links directly up with Revelation, the 18th chapter, which we read earlier. But going back to Jeremiah, the 50, uh, 50th chapter, 
okay so the, the the work of the lord of hosts in the land of the chaldeans is to destroy it all right verse 26 come against her from the utter most utmost border open her storehouses cast her up as heaps and destroy her utterly all right let nothing of her be left okay this hasn't happened yet this links with isaiah the 13 chapters various scriptures that, that that all tie to this slay all her bullocks let them go down to the slaughter woe unto them for their day has come the time of their visitation okay now we're getting to the point the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of babylon because that's where the israelites are going to be delivered from okay <laughs> This is that land of the north. Remember, it says in, in prophecy. Okay. Let's get that. Jeremiah 16. I'll just type in land of the north. So there's a few scriptures that go into it, but. um, Jeremiah. 16 and 15, where it talks about. Look, the days are coming. Well, we're no longer going to talk about the deliverance from of the children of Israel out of Egypt. And to this day, that's being talked about. Well, in the future, okay, Jeremiah 16 and 14, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it should no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. And from all the lands, whither he have driven them, and I will bring them again into the land that I have given their fathers. So the Israelites won't return unto the Holy Land. OK, as you have people over there now saying they're the Israelites until a great destruction and deliverance happens. OK, so you all are, 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 are being caught in your, your, your folly and your lies. Your doctrine isn't holding up with prophecy. OK. And that ain't talking about delivering us from the the, the 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 Vatican City ain't the land of the north. Jeremiah 3 and 18 to prove that America is a hub of oppression of the Israelites. All right. Jeremiah 3 and 18. In those days. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, showing you that they're here together. And they shall come together out of the land of the north, which is Babylon and Great America. We're over here in the northwestern hemisphere. We were brought via prophecy. Okay. The northern tribes came over here. All right. And then you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi be brought over here, along with some of the uh, northern tribes as well, via slave ships. Okay. So we're going to. It says the the, the 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 in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. All right, this is the tabernacle of David. All right, being uh, finished and brought into those chariots, okay, and being perfected, so that we can go and return unto Jerusalem and set up shop and rule and clean the earth up. That's the Lord's promise. Using his people under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, which is Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. So we're going to come out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Okay. Let's uh, get Micah, the fifth chapter. Let's see here. Is this it? Nah, Micah, uh, Micah 5. Micah 5. One more real quick. I know it's in the book of Micah. <laughs> yep, Micah 4 and 10. I was there. It says, um, Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. And we are like a woman in travail. The elect were crying to the Lord to deliver us. We're a damsel in distress for now shall thou go forth out of the city and thou shall dwell in the field and thou shall go even to Babylon. Okay. Where we will be oppressed. 
Okay, and th and there shall thou be delivered. There shall Yahweh redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Zechariah two and seven. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Now, how do we deliver ourselves by repenting, fasting, and coming back to the Lord? All right, through the the, the sacrifice made by Yahweh Shai, and the prophets will be raised up in Babylon as well. Okay, Jeremiah twenty nine, Jeremiah twenty nine and thirteen. It says. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And that's what's happening with the elect remnant in these latter days. And I will be found of you, saith Yahweh, and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations. See, this didn't happen at the time of ancient Babylon. That's how you have to have the discernment and the true teachers to be able to di differentiate, you know, as you're reading the prophets, whether they're talking about something that happened at that time or or they're speaking in prophecy. OK. It says, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. Now, after the Babylonian captivity, we still had captivities. The the, the medial Persian Empire, the uh, the uh, the, the Greco-Roman Empire. All right. Then that little beast. Okay, the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, breaks it down perfectly. Okay, it says, And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Okay, which is primarily the land of the north. And it says, Because ye have said, The Lord have raised us up prophets in Babylon, meaning you will come back to the Heavenly Father through his only begotten son, through the prophets who have received the Holy Spirit. Okay, and the Lord will raise you up prophets in Babylon, which is why it says here in Revelation 18 and 20, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God have avenged you on her. All right, and some of us are going to live to see, you know, the, this place be destroyed as we're beamed up out of here. Some of us are going to be martyrs who are going to already be up on a ship you know, when Yahweh Shai returns, but there's no way to lose. OK, but the, the the prophets are definitely here in Babylon, this physical Babylon, the great. All right. It's up to you to have the ears to hear and the eyes to see where they truly are. OK, but uh, going back to Jeremiah 50 um, and 28, the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of Yahweh our God and the vengeance of his temple. And we are the temple. See that? <laughs> it's a spiritual temple. Here it is. You have these heathen talking about uh, they're going to build a uh, physical temple, which when you really look at it, it's the Tower of Babel. Okay. It's just in a spiritual sense. They have a whole nother uh, thing in mind. They're building up a sacrifice unto Satan. Okay. Um, verse 29 call the archers against Babylon all that bend the bow war all right camp against it round about let none of the, none thereof escape recompense her according to her work according to all she have done which links right with Revelation 18 do unto her that great whore for she have been proud against thee O Lord against the Holy One of Israel okay proud Okay, therefore shall her young men fall in the streets and all the men of war shall be cut down in that day, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord God of hosts, for thy day is come, thy time that I will visit thee, O most proud. Okay, what does the scripture say about uh, uh, Esau? Okay. Obadiah verse 3, the pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwelleth in the cleft of the rock, whose habitation is high, who saith in his heart, who shall bring me down? Okay, the most proud are you Edomites who run this modern day Babylon. There's no way around it. When you go into prophecy, this ain't talking about the Vatican. Okay. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour him round about. Okay. <laughs> Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together 
and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name, and they shall thoroughly plead their and he shall thoroughly plead their cause and he may that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon, which goes with Isaiah, the 14th chapter, man. OK, so Judah and Israel were oppressed together here in this modern day Babylon in the ancient Neo-Babylonian Empire. You only primarily had Judah. A few of the other tribes were scattered. OK, but the, the, the northern kingdom we know were already they left the Assyrian Empire to come over here to the this hemisphere for judgment, of course. But they were there for a minute, you know, uh, doing wickedness. All right. Uh, you know, Christopher Columbus and them came <laughs> and got busy on them. All right. But this is this this is speaking of this new Babylon where you have both Judah and Ephraim, Judah and Israel being what oppressed together. Now, let's look up this word oppressed. All right. I I I shock. OK, to press, to press upon, to violate, to defraud, to do violence, to get deceitfully, to oppress. OK, and what does Daniel, the um, Daniel, the seventh chapter says that this horn would do what? OK, this horn would do what? Daniel, the seventh chapter and the 25th verse, and he shall speak great words against the most high. And shall wear out the saints of the most high and shall think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand a time and time and a dividing of times. All right. Which just was was that 350 years where he had a grip on our mind and everything. But the Lord eventually in the 70s. When Esau went up to the space, what did he do? He sent down the Holy Spirit. All right. And the true teachings started to develop in the minds of the elect, starting with a man named Abba Bivens. Who brought the whole testimony out before that you had particular Jake's teaching, you know, uh, the, you know, the Torah. But he brought the understanding of the whole volume of the book and the hearts of the fathers of the children return. The hearts of the, the fathers return to the children and hearts of the children to the fathers, man. All right. Which would lead to the prophets being raised up in judgment sitting. OK, verse 26. But the judgment shall sit. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints of the most high, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him. This would all be done through the fall of Babylon. All right. Which would be a hub of oppression. OK, where we would be crushed, defrauded and destroyed. All right. Via prophecy, both Judah and and Ephraim. This is not talking about the Vatican. All right. More to come. Hopefully I'll edify. Shalom.